أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله الحمد لله الذي أنزل الفرقان على عبده ليكون للعالمين نذيرا والصلاة والسلام على خير خلق ونور عرش أفضل الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيبنا وسيدنا وسندنا وشفيعنا ومولانا أبي القاسم محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين المأسمين المظلومين أما بعد فقد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتاب المجيد وقوله الحق وهو أستق الصادقين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تقدموا بين يدي الله ورسوله واتقوا الله إن الله سميع عليم صدق الله العلي العظيم صلوات على محمد وآل محمد All praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I begin in his blessed name for granting us this existence and giving us the opportunity to be tested simply because for us to know where we stand in the realm of his divine mercy and Allah is merciful in that he is oft forgiving when we do slip and reject him or do foolish things in life for Allah loves to forgive Allah yuhibbu tawabin Allah loves those who turn to him and Allah is ghafoorur rahim is oft forgiving we as a human society recognize this grace of god in that he has given us this opportunity to seek forgiveness from him but by the same token we must not forget that we should also be very forgiving because Allah loves those who who forgive you know walqadimin alghayb they hold back the anger, they forgive mankind, God loves the good doers. So we hope and pray that in this blessed month of forgiveness, it's a month of reflection, it's a month of improving ourselves, it's a month where we set our goals for higher goals in life, that inshallah we achieve it within these 30 days, in the 30 nights inshallah. Salawat ala Muhammad wa al Muhammad. The Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, إِنَّمَا بُعِثْتُ لِأُتَمِّمَا مَكَارِمُ الْأَخْلَاقِ Indeed, I was sent to perfect your moral traits, your akhlaq, your behavior. We find that there is nothing more powerful in the message of God for those of us who believe in the message of God than when we practice it. We don't have to tell people the philosophy of religion nor do we need to go deep into the historical context of religion. If we practice in the best of ways with the most sublime of characters, people will be attracted to us in a magnetic way because they will wonder how is it that you are so refined as a person. The Messenger of Allah and his Ahlul Bayt were the most refined people that ever walked on this earth. And they were patient, they were wise, they were intelligent, they were witty, they were quick, they were very pleasant, they smiled a lot, they were very generous, very giving, very forgiving, very caring, very sharing. And these are the characteristics we hope that all of us will develop before we die, because I believe that the more we get into that, inshallah, the higher the stations we will achieve in the next world, particularly in paradise. So tonight I'd like to touch on a few subjects. As you noticed yesterday I touched on the issue of womanhood and it's all part of this balance of the equation to recognize Allah's mercy and gifts and that he has placed us on this earth for us to be tested due to his mercy but it is for us to recognize his grace and for us to put ourselves in position to continue to fulfill his creation, in the sense of giving us existence. How do we achieve that? The Quran is rich with stories of prophets, and Allah gives these examples, you know, about Yusuf, for example, Allah says, نَحْنُ نَقُصُّ عَلَيْكَ أَحْسَنَ الْقَصَصِ بِمَا أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ 
We're going to tell you a beautiful story. And then the entire story of Yusuf, when he's a child, he talks to his father about the dream he has. You know, the 11 planets, the sun and the moon bowing to him. And so on and so forth. And you find that the whole story is rich with all kinds of nuances. And one of them, of course, is jealousy. Jealousy, which is one of the roots of corruption in society. And Iblis, who fell from grace, was also removed from the grace of Allah due to jealousy. And Allah says, Am yahsuduna nas ala ma Allah min fadli. Are you jealous for what Allah has given? And Allah gives. And He has given much to Ibrahim wa Ali Ibrahim. And He gives to prophets and Imams much because they need to guide and to lead. But He has given us much. But if you look in our society today, there is so much internal destruction within families and within our communities simply due to jealousy. So tonight's lecture is the holistic message of akhlaq and why do we indulge in jealousy? Why do we indulge in backbiting, in fault finding, in suspicion? Allah says in ba'da dhanni ithm wa la tajassasu wa la yaghtab ba'dukum ba'da Suspicion in most cases is a sin and do not find faults and do not backbite each other. La yaghtab ba'dukum ba'da Why do we do this? Why do we as a human race do this? Why do we do it to such levels that we enact wars because of that? Karbala is a great example. You know, Imam Hussain alayhi salatu was salam, salawat ala Muhammad wa al Muhammad. Imam Hussain alayhi salam is asking the enemy on the other side, why have you done this? Why are you doing this? I'm not after the Khilafah. God has already conferred that authority on me, whether you accept it or not. You know, and I'm willing to leave. I'll go to India. I will leave. Just, why have you cornered me and my family? They say, we are jealous of your father. The Prophet loved him too much. He loved you too much. He held you on his shoulders. You see, he kissed you lip to lip. He said, Hussein no minni wa ana min al Hussein." Hussein is from me and I am from Hussein. Lahmuhum lahmi wa damuhum dami. Their flesh is my flesh. Their blood is my blood. Anybody who makes war with them makes war with me. I make war with those who make war with them. You see? And I make peace. Wa silmun liman salamahum. So, what is the reason for this? I believe at the core it is because of our lack of trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We feel we are a creation that is surviving in this vast jungle. And we feel the only way we will succeed is if we hoard, if we destroy others, what we call survival of the fittest. If we can preempt to move and marginalize the other person, if they are weak, take advantage of them. Put them down. Why do you think bullying is such a big thing, in, especially in the young generation? Because they have the least amount of security in their self-identity. Children bully each other for that reason. Sadly, even adults do it. They never give up the bullying. And they never have that tranquility or security. And therefore, it leads them to be destructive more than constructive. Jealousy is a sickness. The Prophet said, Al-Hasad. You know, when you are jealous, you're like fire burning wood. You get destroyed. In these months of Ramadan, when we're fasting, we should look deep into ourselves and say, no, I must never be jealous. For the treasury of Allah is infinite. He created all of us. He has been creating. He creates now and will continue to create forever. And his treasury doesn't end. God's mulk is the entire universe. But we doubt it. That if somebody succeeds, we feel there's only that much success. And if he has succeeded, then I must bring him down so that I don't look like a loser. 
or rather than saying, let me work to become as good, if not better, and pray for this person to become even better, as Allah says, Ya you are insan, inna ka kadihun ila rabbika kadhan famulaqi. Oh mankind, struggle upon struggle till you meet your Lord. But don't defeat people that are good, defeat people that are evil. So the story of Yusuf, for example, is an elegant story showing jealousy of the brothers, which then leads them to plan a strategy by which to take the young brother and throw him in a well with the hope that he will die. Can you imagine somebody dropping their own brother into a well, their own beloved brother? The thought is repulsive. Just the thought, it's repulsive. But it happened. And they planned it, and they lied, and they strategized due to jealousy. And I want us to know that these are children of prophets. You know, we're all blessed to be children of Adam, who is a prophet. But these are direct descendants of a prophet, Yaqub. Directly, the prophet is getting revelations from God, and they are his children. You can imagine how ignorant society can be, even in the family of prophets. But there's no such thing that because you are a family of the prophet that you are an angel or that you're necessarily superior. Here, the brothers. But Allah has chosen them as prophets to guide and they get their biggest trial within their own families. And you find that they take this brother, they throw him, hoping that he will die. Then to be sold to slavery. He hasn't died, so he's sold to slavery. Just think about that. Your young brother taken into the vast jungles of earth. You don't know where he's going to end up. What will happen to him? And they don't care. This is how ugly the world can be even within families. Jealousy. I've seen brothers and sisters kill each other for inheritance. They hate each other for inheritance. I've seen people kill each other as spouses, married couples shoot each other and kill, kill their children. Think about it, this one woman who was going through a divorce case with her husband in New York City takes her young, beautiful boy and jumps off a tall building and kills herself and her son so that the husband doesn't get the child. Now it was a heated divorce case of custody issues, but should one go in that direction, what happened to patients? What happened to justice? If we don't believe in the justice of Allah, then we will do such things. If we don't believe in the day of judgment, then we will do such things. If we don't believe in the grace and the infinite treasury of Allah, we will be jealous. We will be destructive. We will kill each other. The problems of the world come as a result of this. This conversation about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not something that we have made up. It's so central as a solution to all the problems in life. But on the flip side, there are those who've taken belief in God and become lethal too. In the name of God, they kill. In the name of God, they take the rights of people. ISIS is a good example. Or the right-wing Christians who do the wrong things, or the extremist Jews that do things, even the extremist Buddhists who do what they do in Burma. In the name of God, in the name of their religion, all of these are false ideas. This conversation is about who is Allah. So Allah in the Quran in Surah, Surah Al-Hujurat, the 49th chapter, Allah lays the rules of akhlaq. Although the entire Quran is a book of akhlaq, it's the book of manners, but this is much more specific. Allah starts by saying, Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu, la tuqaddimu bayna yidayillahi wa rasooli. O you who believe, do not go ahead of Allah and his messenger. لا تقدموا بين يدي الله ورسوله Be God conscious. Don't go ahead of him. Meaning obey them. They are your commanders in chief. They are your guides. They are the ones who are going to bring harmony. You find even in the prophet's time, the ones who troubled the prophet were the ones who acted more smart than the prophet. They would instruct the prophet what should be done. They would disobey him blatantly. They would call him names. They would call him delirious. When Allah says, 
وما غوى وما ينطق عن الحوى إن هو إلا وحي يوحى Allah swears by the stars والنجم إذا هوى Your companion ماذا الله has not gone astray he is not lost ماذا الله صاحبكم nor is he you know insane by any standards you're calling him delirious no this is a clear revelation from God to you so imagine his companions were accusing him the Quran says ماذا الله صاحبكم وما غوى don't forget that part ماذا الله صاحبكم meaning the companions were complaining of the Prophet, accusing him. And Allah is replying, no, he is not. So people, even in the Prophet's time, bothered him so much. But Allah is telling us, if you want security, if you want success, obey Allah and the Prophet. Obey them, follow them as one. وَإِن تُطِيُوا اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ لَا يَلَتْكُمْ مِنْ عَمَالِكُمْ شَيْئًا If you obey Allah and His Messenger, then your deeds will be intact. So Surah Al-Hujurat starts with that. Be God conscious. God is all hearing, all knowing. He sets the standard. Many of us don't understand Allah. Hence we indulge in jealousy, in backbiting, in fault finding, in, in, in quickness to try to marginalize people because somehow we feel we have to do this as we're swimming in this vast ocean. And if I don't dunk people, I'm not going to stay afloat. This is a false idea. Allah says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, la tarfa'u aswatakum fawqa sawti al-nabi, wa la tajharu lahu bilqawli ka jahari ba'dikum li ba'din, an tahbata a'amalikum, wa antum la tashu'arun. O you who believe, do not raise your voices above that of the messenger, of the prophet, la tarfa'u aswatakum fawqa sawti al-nabi, higher than the prophet, lest your deeds become nullified and you don't see it. That's amazing. Now, you might ask, today, 21st century, the messenger is not among us in the physical, tangible sense. How can I gauge my voice above his? Actually, this verse, there were those companions who raised their voices above the messenger. They were arguing in front of the messenger and they were being disrespectful to the Holy Prophet. But the message stands for us too, that the next verse Allah is saying that you should respect your Prophet so much, that even if he's not with you, you must respect him. This is what the ayah, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu la tarfa' aswatakum fawqa sawti nabi What Allah is implying is you must respect him at all times even when he is not with you. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. So it means that we should love the Prophet, respect him. When his name is mentioned, we're all ears. What did he say? Qala Rasulillah. The Prophet said, what did he say? I want to hear it. He is my number one human being that is the most central to my iman. Allah in the Quran in Surah Al-Ahzab says, An-Nabiyyu awla bil mu'mineen min anfusihim wa azwajum mahatum. Here, wa azwajum mahatum, I'll explain it. The Prophet has greater right on the believers than they have on themselves. And the wives are their mothers, meaning you cannot marry them. Once a woman gets married to the Holy Prophet, she is forbidden to be remarried. That's why Allah says, azwaj ummahatum. It's not like our mother who inherits or we inherit from them. It's not the same. That's another subject. The Prophet has such authority. So Allah says, respect him. Or you believe, do not raise your voices. Meaning, do not fabricate things do not attribute wrong things to him do not make fun of him do not make jokes of the prophet do not be negligent when he is mentioned when he talks to you pay attention la tarfa aswatakum in its purest form means this that do not disrespect him and if you do Having said, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, Allah says that your deeds may be nullified if you do not respect the Holy Prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Salawat.
The next verse Allah says إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَغُضُّونَ أَصْوَاتَهُمْ عِنْدَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُولَيْكَ الَّذِينَ امْتَحَنَ اللَّهِ قُلُوبَهُمْ لِلتَّقْوَى لَهُمْ مَغْفِرَةٌ وَأَجْرٌ عَظِيمٌ Those who lower their voices in front of the Prophet إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَغُضُّونَ أَصْوَاتُمْ عِنْدَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ The ones who respect him. The ones who are calm and humble and listen to what he has to say. Allah says we test them with taqwa. We give them higher stations. And they are the ones who will be forgiven and a great reward will be given to them. This is the principle of Islam, brothers and sisters. When we talk about Sunnah and Shia as Muslims, there are five great, five Madahib in Islam, five, right? Five major schools of thought. The Ja'fari is the Shia school of thought. We all have to come to discuss this matter at this level of Allah and Rasulullah. Because that is the axis of the religion of Allah. When we, when we praise Ahlul Bayt, its credence is from Allah and Rasulullah. When we love Ahlul Bayt and we talk about them, it's not because we created it. It's because Allah and the Prophet told us how great they are. It's because Allah and the Prophet told us how important they are. But at the end of the day, if we have a dispute in that matter, then let's come back to Allah and Rasulullah. You know, if you believe in it, this, God says, Ya yu ladina amanu in verse 59 of Surah An-Nisa, Ati Allah wa ati Rasul wa uli lamri minkum. Or you believe, obey Allah and obey the Messenger and those vested with authority from among you. Ita'at is mentioned twice for three groups. Means the third group has to be appointed by the first two. Ati Allah wa ati Rasul wa uli lamri minkum. But Allah continues, He says, but if there's a dispute in legal matters, Sharia matters, Fiqhi matters. If you're not sure what is halal, what is haram, how is it? Allah says then, and if you're not sure of who that authority is, then go back to Allah and the Messenger if you believe in God and the Day of Judgment. You see? Allah says if you believe in it, then go back to Allah and the Messenger. It's a beautiful system that the axis is the deen of Allah, is Allah and His Messenger. The Messenger is the practical connection to God that shows us how to behave and what to believe in and he becomes the role model for us and Allah is the ultimate owner of the universe. And here Allah says, those who respect the messenger, your deeds are intact. Humbleness, when we say the Prophet was humble, that means we have to be humble. For if we are rude, then technically we're disrespectful to the Prophet. When we lie, we're disrespectful to the Prophet. When we hurt others, we're disrespectful to, our, to, to the Prophet. When we cheat, we're disrespectful to the Prophet. When we reject the prescriptions of Allah, or we fabricate stories against Allah, then we're disrespectful to the Messenger of Allah. And Allah says, your deeds may be wiped out. On Judgment Day, you will stand there, and you'll be asking for the rewards. Allah says, what reward? You didn't believe in it. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُنَادُونَكَ مِنْ وَرَاءِ الْحُجُرَاتِ أَكْثَرْهُمْ لَا يَعْقِلُونَ There were those who were, you know, the desert dwellers. They were the nomadic people who were like nomads who traveled in the desert. They lacked akhlaq. They lacked manners. They were crude. They were rough and tough. You know, in Arabia, they used to fight with each other for silly things. So when they were in Medina, <clears throat> they'd come to the Prophet and say, Hey, Muhammad, come outside. They would scream from outside. So Allah says, those who call you from outside, behind the private chambers, most of them don't understand. They're jahil. They have no manners. Because the religion of Islam is mannerful. The Prophet says, indeed, I was sent to perfect your moral traits. Akhlaq. Here, I notice when food is being served. Sometimes people are crude. Not here, I'm saying, but when food is served in places. Even here, we should respect each other. We do, alhamdulillah. But let's remind each other. When we put the food and give them the food, those who are serving, respect them. For they're working hard to deliver. Help them. Help them clean up. And I know you do. Mashallah, this community, I've watched it. A lot of very good people in, in our community, mashallah. It's, it's a blessing to be in your circles. But remind our children, help out. 
clean. You see something on the floor, pick it up. You make noise, be silent. You know, there's dirt, pick it up. It's Allah's house. This is where Allah is remembered. Help it. Akhlaq, sit. Somebody is not eating, give it to them. You may want, I've seen people, they cry for Imam Hussein, and then when the food comes, they take all the meat. And then they pass you. I said, mashallah, Imam Hussein was so sacrificial. I look at him and I said, really? <laughs> right? It's unfortunate, but we haven't, we haven't connected. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, saying to us that, akhlaq, be sophisticated. Don't turn your face away from people. لا تصائر خدك للناس ولا تمشي في الأرض مرحا إن الله لا يحب كل مختال فخور. Don't turn your face away from people. Smile at them. Hug them. This community, mashallah, and I'm not patronizing, honestly, but such friendliness. Everybody smiles, wants to come and hug you. But let us open this also to outsiders, people of other faiths, people of other cultures. Let's welcome them. Let's make it a rich environment of conversations because this is what Allah loves. Now, Allah says, Ya yulladina amanu. By the way, the next verse, walau annahum sabaru hatta. God says, if you were to be patient till the Prophet comes out, it will be better for you. Now notice, Islam, <coughs> God is talking about calling from outside on the street to a person inside the house. You would think the scripture of God is so detailed? Exactly. This Quran guides you to that which is most upright. It even teaches us how to call somebody. How patient to be, where to stand. When you sit in a circle, are you giving your back to someone? Are you looking at them? People are sitting next to you. Are you disturbing them in any way? Are you doing something that may be bothering them? That awareness is taqwa. Allah says, if you are to be patient, you see, it would be better for them. God is merciful. The next verse, Ya yalladhina amanu, in ja'akum fasiqun bi naba'in, فَتَبَيَّنُوا أَن تُصِيبُ قَوْمًا بِجَهَالَةٍ فَتُصْبِهُ عَلَى مَا فَعَلْتُمْ نَادِمِينَ When somebody comes and gives you news, a troublemaker, Fasiq is a troublemaker. In our communities, in every community, there's a bunch of them. They seem to have seen the world as a glass that's half empty. They just can't get enough of trouble. Troublemakers, they love trouble. They are pranksters. They feel... Making jokes out of others is a fun thing. Their anger spews out of the ears. Troublemaker. Or silent, but very strategic. They come to the Islamic centers or churches. They become members, board members, and then they create trouble. Constant fitna. They get on the phone, they cause trouble. They co no progress. Sometimes you wonder, sometimes our institutions are just never progressive. You're always wondering, why is it not progressing? Like, why are the atheists progressing? <laughs> because we got a monkey in the wrench. We got a troublemaker who's going to constantly create fitna. I heard, did you hear that? Oh, he, he said, she said, he, troublemaker. Allah says, In ja'akum fasiqun bi naba'in fatabayyanu. When a troublemaker comes, validate. Because perchance, if you believe the troublemaker as true, you will cause more harm and you will regret it. So, if an evildoer comes to you with a report, look carefully into it. Lest you harm a people in ignorance, then be sorry for what you have done. If somebody says, by the way, I heard this brother saying bad things about you. Say, oh really? Let me call him. I just spoke to him. No, 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 don't call him, don't call him. The secret, brother. So you and I were sharing this one-on-one -on -one secret, you see. Really? Now, notice, he, this person is maligning. It's dangerous. If you and I take one more step to validate, the troublemaker will have been prevented. And the minute you prevent a troublemaker, for them to create trouble the second time is harder. It's like a thief. If they keep walking into houses and they keep breaking and they take the jewels and the money and they run and no one's stopping them, then they'll keep breaking houses. 
Research shows that even if you put a sign outside that there's an alarm or, you know, beware of dog, even if there's no dog, they will think twice because a troublemaker doesn't want resistance. So Allah is telling us in akhlaq, resist. When trouble comes, resist. Don't be silent. Validate. Question its integrity. But what you are doing is two things. Saving yourself from embarrassment. And you're also telling the troublemaker, don't do more of this. Now, as you know, there was a man, Walid ibn Utbah, who was a troublemaker in the Prophet's time. And he goes to a city and says it. These people wanted to kill me and they were starting to amass an army to go and fight. But the Prophet validated and found out that this man was a troublemaker. He brought false news. We have that in our communities too. Validate and you will see many troubles will go away. And know that troublemakers create trouble because they lack faith in Allah. The same Walid became governor and he was so drunk he used to do extra sujood. And then he would look at the people, you want more sujood? I can do more sujood if you want. That's how bad he was under the third caliph. So what I'm saying to us is troublemaker and the root word here, fasiq, the root word is fasaqa. One of the meanings of fasaqa is when a silkworm breaks from its cocoon. It's safe, but when it breaks from its cocoon and it leaves the cocoon, it comes in a state of danger. It's causing danger. When, you see, when Allah says, Ya yuhalladhina amanu, amana in Arabic means security. So Allah is not only telling us, oh you who believe, He's telling us, oh you who are secure. So fasiq is the opposite, one who challenges security. So let's be not like that. وَعَلَمُوا أَنَّ فِيكُمْ رَسُولَ اللَّهُ لَوْ يُوْتِئَكُمْ فِي كَثِيرٍ مِنَ الْأَمْرِ لَعْنِتُمْ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهُ حَبَّبَ إِلَيْكُمُ الْإِيمَانِ وَزَيَّنَهُ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ وَكَرَّحَ إِلَيْكُمُ الْكُفْرَ وَالْفُسُوقَ وَالْعِسِيَانِ أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الرَّاشِدُونَ This is a beautiful verse that, you notice when Allah is talking about bad behavior, He keeps bringing me back to the Prophet and tells me, let me tell you why it's important to behave. Don't forget, Allah and your Messenger are the center. This is why you should behave. He says, no, that among you is Allah's Apostle. Should He have obeyed you with your whimsical suggestions, we would have fallen into many issues and problems. لَوْ يُطِيعُكُمْ فِي كَثِيرٍ مِنَ الْأَمْرِ لَعَنِتُّمْ لَعَنِتُّمْ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ حَبَّبَ إِلَيْكُمْ Rather, God has put love in religion to you. He has endeared faith to you and made it seeming in your heart. And He has made hateful to you unbelief, transgression, and disobedience. These it is who are the followers of the right way. Meaning you love religion and you don't like oppression. You don't like unbelief, transgression, disobedience. You don't like it. It bothers you. Allah says, that's my mercy to you, my gift to you. Fadlam min Allahi wa ni'ma wallahu alimun hakim. It's a gift of God and He is all-knowing, all-wise. وَإِن طَائِفَتَانِ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ قَتَتَلُوا فَأَصْلِهُ بَيْنَهُمَا فَإِنْ بَغَتْ إِحْدَاهُمْ عَلَى الْأُخْرَى فَقَاتِلُوا الَّتِي تَبْغِي حَتَّى تَفِيَ إِلَى أَمْرِ اللَّهِ فَإِنْ فَاعَتْ فَأَصْلِهُ بَيْنَهُمَا بِالْعَدْلِ وَأَقْسِتُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُقْسِتِينَ Beautiful verse. When two groups of believers fight, two groups, this is all akhlaq here, all akhlaq. I'm touching very rapidly, I'll end shortly. When you get into a quarrel, make peace between them. But if one of them acts wrongfully towards the other, fight until you bring the wrong back to Allah's command. And if they return, make peace between them with justice and act equitably. Surely Allah loves those who act equitably. When we Muslims fight with each other, make peace. Don't allow it. And be hesitant to get into a fight. Even if somebody is instigating and making bad things to push to you, hesitate. Don't get into it. Try to delay it. Hopefully they'll have a second thought. Now this verse actually became very powerful after the Prophet's departure. It became very real. One example was in the battle of Jamal. 
in Basra, when Imam Ali السلام, fights Aisha, the wife of the Prophet, in Basra. And I think it's important to mention this. Imam Ali السلام, same thing when he fought Muawiyah in Safin. One group against the other, but they're all within the banner of Islam. Karbala, excellent example. Two groups claiming to be Muslims. One is right, the other one is wrong. Pay attention to history here. Aisha had an, amassed an army and put herself in a cage on a camel. The messenger forbade his wives from leaving their homes after his departure. Remain in your homes, Allah commands in the Quran. But there was a violation of that. But look, while she's violating because of her jealousy and hatred, it's not a secret, you find Imam Ali was very gentle with her, respectful to her. And he would warn her and say, please, stop. Don't do this. It's not the right thing to do. They say that on the day the battle started in Basra, Aisha's army delivered the largest amount of arrows to Imam Ali's army. And they say the sky was black. It's amazing. Find that Muhammad ibn Hanafiya was with him. You find Imam Ali alayhi salam told him, take this flag and go forward. He said, the sky is black with arrows. He says, I, I felt a breeze. After I said that, I felt a breeze. And I saw the flag in the front. I saw my father take it from me and charge forward, unafraid. But the generals come to Imam Ali alayhi salam and says that they are attacking us. They're killing our soldiers. Imam said, be silent, be patient. But they're attacking us. They're hitting us. The Imam said, don't respond. Give it peace. Give peace a chance. Maybe they'll think twice. Until finally, Imam gave the command fight. But how did the Imam end the war? Strategically. He said, that camel is causing too much trouble. The camel. It was causing the other side to get very full of fervor and emotional. So the Imam sends one of his soldiers and says, cut the legs of that camel. Let it fall. Not to kill the other side, because he hates to kill people. He hates to kill believers. He cuts the legs, and soon after, Imam defeats Aisha's army in Basra. She goes back to the tent. He sends her brother, Muhammad bin Abu Bakr, to go and talk to her, to give up her fight, and to go back to Medina per the command of Allah. She refuses. But look at the respect he gives her. He sends her brother as mahram. He sends her brother as an honor, but she still rejects and rejects. Then Imam Hassan goes. And finally she accepts because Imam Hassan threatened her that something Imam Ali will use that she won't like, which was the command the Prophet gave him should this problem ever come. And she knew about it. I won't talk about it here. And she goes back to Medina. So Allah says, Respect them, honor them, even if they fight you. You defeat them, don't dishonor them. Hold them with dignity. This is the akhlaq of Islam. Salawat ala Muhammad wa al Muhammad. I'll end this very quickly. Innama al mu'minuna ikhwa fa aslihu bayna khawaykum wa attaqullah la'allakum turhamun. Indeed, the believers are brethren, therefore make peace with each other. So more mercy comes to you and you will be more God conscious. Ya yuwalladhina amanu, la yaskhar qawmun min qawmin asa yakunu khayran minhum. All you who believe, let not one group laugh at another group. This is bullying. You young brothers here sitting in the front, sisters, who are suffering maybe from bullying, you're in the back there. Pay attention to this verse. I advise you to read the 11th verse of the 49th chapter. Memorize it, talk it, walk it, live it. I say this, without any compunctions, without any fear. Read it, talk it, walk it. This is how we eradicate problems in society. This is how we eradicate jealousy. This is how we eradicate 
destruction in society. We have a president today who's a chief executive bully, as I mentioned this many times. We want to counter this with the Quran. We are not going to be bullies. We're going to be gentle. We're going to be sophisticated. We're going to be dignified. And we're going to swallow our anger. And we're going to hold our respect with quietness. Let not one group laugh at another. Sometimes a group comes in and says, Ah, oh, look at those people. Allah forbids it. And let no women groups laugh at other groups. As you know, one of the wives of the Prophet had entered the masjid and some of the other wives were laughing at her. Umm Salama had entered and a piece of, part of her dress was hanging out and they started to laugh. So Allah says, وَلَا نِسَاءٌ مِّن نِسَاءٍ أَسَانْ يَكُنَّ خَيْرًا مِّنْهُنَّ وَلَا تَلْمِزُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ Don't find faults in each other. وَلَا تَنَابَزُوا بِلَا الْقَابِ بِأَسَ الْإِسْمُ الْفُسُوقُ بَعَدَ الْإِيمَانِ And don't give each other bad names. وَمَنْ لَمْ يَتُوبْ فَأُولَيْكَ هُمُ الظَّالِمُونَ And if you don't desist, you are an oppressor. Beautiful verse. يَا أَيُهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اجْتَنِبُوا كَثِيرًا مِنَ الظَّنِّ إِنَّ بَعْضَ الظَّنِّ إِثْمُ وَلَا تَجَسَّسُ وَلَا يَغْتَبْ بَعْدُكُمْ بَعْدًا أَيُحِبُّ أَحَدُكُمْ أَنْ يَأْكُلَ لَحْمَ أَخِي مَيْتًا فَكَرِهْتُمُوه O you who believe, avoid most suspicion. Oh, I'm suspecting. Maybe this guy doesn't like me. I'm suspicious. I'm suspecting. It's a very dangerous thing. Marriages break because of that. Couples have had divorces because one or both sides have been too suspicious of the other side. Excessive suspicion. Where there's nothing you can do to eradicate the suspicion. Suspicion, Allah says, in most cases is a sin. And do not spy. You know, when you're on somebody's computer and their email is open, do not read what is on their emails. If their cell phone is sitting and the text is coming, do not read it, please. Be careful. Mothers and fathers, if they look at their children, it's okay. That's not spying. That's, that's protecting. But in general, if it's somebody's secret, do not spy. Do not read people's private stuff. You do not allow an ear. Oh, let me tell you the secret of what they... No, no, I'm sorry. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Don't tell me, please. Because I'll be a party to this now. I don't want it. Allah says, and do not backbite each other. You know when we backbite? Allah uses the analogy of eating the flesh of your dead brother. Do you like to eat the flesh of your dead brother? I want you to imagine you have a brother who's dead and now you're carving out a piece of his meat and sticking it in your mouth. Allah says it's disgusting. That's what you do when you backbite. And history shows there are people who backbit. The Prophet said, I see a flesh stuck between your teeth because you backbite. We must stop that. By the way, people who backbite are dangerous people. There are people who can't stop backbiting. Even in their love for someone, they backbite. They're constantly backbiting. Backbiting all the time. Now bear in mind, if they're your friends, I can guarantee you they backbite you. So be careful with those kind of people. Keep a distance or teach them to stop backbiting because it's a disease that's going to hit you. The last verse is, I don't have time. قَالَتِ الْعَرَابُ آمَنَّا قُلْ لَمْ تُؤْمِنُوا وَلَكِنْ قُلُوا أَسْلَمْنَا وَلَمَّا يَدْخُلِ الْإِيمَانُ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ Islam is a religion that's a verb. Submission in Islam, action is the real Islam, not lip service. The de desert dwellers say we believe. قَالَتِ الْعَرَابُ آمَنَّا قُلْ لَمْ تُؤْمِنُوا وَلَكِنْ قُلُوا أَسْلَمْنَا Rather say we submit. وَلَمَّا يَدْخُلِ الْإِيمَانُ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ وَإِن تُطِيُوا اللَّهُ وَرَسُولِ لَا يَلِتْكُمْ مِنْ عَمَالِكُمْ شَيْئًا now, if you obey Allah and the Prophet, your deeds will be intact. So notice in the beginning, God says, if you are disrespectful, your deeds will be wiped out. In this same surah, in the end, Allah says, if you obey Allah and the Messenger, then your deeds will be intact. There are a few more verses in the end, but I don't have time tonight. I want to end tonight. But let's reflect in these nights of Ramadan, how do I improve myself to become less suspicious, less vindictive, more forgiving, less gossiping. In fact, one brother came to me and says, Brother, you say less gossiping. Great point. Should we not stop gossiping? I said, of course, of course. Stop all bad behavior. 
But let's be hopeful. Less to zero. That's my point. Stop it. Stop all gossiping. Stop all fault finding. But it's not easy. It takes time. It takes a lot of effort. But let's start doing it. Let's make our societies healthy. You'll be surprised how many people will love to come to these kinds of gatherings because they know these gatherings are safe. This friendship is safe. This, these families are good. You know how the deen of Allah grew in Mecca and Medina? Through such behavior with the Prophet and his companions. It was this kind of behavior that they were the very good ones that people were so attracted to, and they became great followers. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma inna nargabu ilayka fi dawlatin karima tu'izzu biha al-Islam wa ahla wa tudhillu biha al-nifaq wa ahla wa taj'aluna fiha min al-du'ati la ta'atik wa al-qadati la sabili wa tarzuquna biha karamat al-dunya wa al-akhira I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Imam Sahib al-Zaman ajallahu wa ta'ala farajak is present among us he's in ghaybah I'll talk about him fully tomorrow inshallah on, on a much more explicit understanding of his occultation but I want I, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us tawfiq to follow his footsteps as our witness on this earth today and that Allah brings him back to us soon for there is much injustice in this world. There is much carnage taking place. The warmongers who are beating the drums in Washington right now and in UK and in Europe and in other parts of the world and in Israel, they are just ready to get into a battle and war. Ya Allah, diffuse that so that there is peace and tranquility in this earth, on this earth for all of humanity. Wa da'wan alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wassalamu alaikum jami'an wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.